have the last speaker, Professor Wanta. So, Professor Wanta is from the um, University of uh, Science and uh, Technology of China. Um, he focused on the software deep learning and AI algorithm with better interpretability, uh, generalization, and uh, uh, optimism. So, he has published over 50 over top tier conference and journals. Over 10 papers have been featured in the most cited and influential uh, list and the best paper. So, uh, let's give a applause for Professor Wang Xiang. So, for the topic of uh, explainability of a uh, graph neural network. Yeah, let's work on it. Oh, thanks, Pihao. And uh, thanks, uh, um, Professor Mia. Yeah, I'm glad to be here as a speaker, not as a PhD student. And uh, I graduated from the US in uh, 2019. And uh, in the, uh, prior to the USTC, I was a postdoc uh, at the next, next class, class lab as a research fellow. Okay, let's jump into our talk, uh, our talk today. So sorry, that is not about the chat GPT and uh, not about the GPT. It's, uh, I think it's uh, not that exact, uh, existing uh, topic. It's about the explainability of graph neural network. So what's it, why we focus on the graph data? Because graph data is uh, are everywhere, uh, covering the social networks and covering the uh, molecular graphs or the and the, some uh, transaction information or the networks or not knowledge graphs. And why we care about the graph neural network? As we all know, graph neural network is the powerful uh, graph in, uh, encoders on encoders on graph data, and it captures the graph structures and information and uh, model the message information or the propagation along with the graph structure. And uh, but why explainability? Because as we all know, most of the uh, AI models, especially the deep learning models, are black box. And uh, we only know the input, and we only get the output, like the prediction. And but we have no idea is uh, what about uh, the, what happened inside the models. So we call for the explainability. It's just given a black box model, black box GNN models. How can we interpret or the explain, the, explain to the users the model's outcome? And uh, so we can do a, a, do a initial or the simple try is uh, to, to get, to, to try to figure out uh, what knowledge should or the, does the model use to make the decisions. And uh, uh, here the knowledge is about the insights for a particular uh, audience and into a specific problem. Because we have the different audience and we have the different uh, tasks or the, or the uh, scenarios. So we need a different kind of the explanations. And uh, uh, in literature, and there's uh, two research lines about the uh, explanabilities. The first one is the post hoc explanability. And the second one is the intrinsic interpretabilities. And what is different? And so let's focus on the, let's look at the first one is the, uh, this part is about uh, how we model a graph neural network, how we apply the graph neural networks on the graph data. It's uh, we have the graph, like the input graphs, and we apply the graph neural networks on the graph. And then we will get output prediction by hat. And uh, as for the post hoc explanability, uh, the input is uh, different. The input is different because we have the input graph and we have the output predictions. So here is the prediction one half is already given. And then we try to figure out so which, which part of the input graph is most influential to the predictions. So it's a what type, what subgraph determines the predictions. And then we try to figure out, try to find the explanatory subgraph. And uh, here we name uh, GX. So, uh, so in literature, and the most uh, most person do is uh, to use an additional explainer models as an observer and to observe the uh, the behaviors of the target models like target GNNs and then we try to guess what happened inside it. So uh, it's uh, to mimic the decision making process, it's a guess or mimic the decision making process of the target models. 
So, uh, so I'd like to introduce our work here. The first work is about expanding the graph neural network with a total screening. So, uh, and uh, again, this is a post hoc expandability uh, framework. And uh, uh, let's, let's look at uh, specific uh, input. So when we give a thin graph, what is a thin graph? It's just we take a picture of the scenario and then we try to end up, uh, we model the uh, objects inside the feature uh, image uh, as the node and the relationship between the different uh, objects as the edge. And then we can build a thin graph here, like here, the man on ocean or the man standing on the uh, support. And uh, then uh, we build a graph neural network on the same graphs and try to predict the scene of the, this graph or the scene of this image, like the surfing. And uh, then we try to figure out what kind of the knowledge or the, what uh, most inferential, the most important apps are the, the GL model or the target model uh, used to make the decisions. And here are the two, uh, I think it's the two leading ways. And uh, the first one is we use a great, we use a gradient like signals and we perform the great, uh, we calculate the gradients of the one edge, one edge or the one node. And then we rank the scores, uh, gradients like scores, and then we select the top K uh, edge as the, our uh, extensory subgraph. The other one is that we try to build uh, attention models and then we try to mask some graphs and then mask some uh, uh mask some edge of the nodes and then we rank rank the nodes based on the attention scores and we select the top k. So uh so this is a two uh, famous sorry uh this is a two famous uh famous uh explainers. It's called SA and the, the and the, the other is uh, uh, gene explainers, but uh, we uh, but we find uh, there is an inherent limitation of the, these two types of uh, uh, research lines. The first one is uh, the focus on serious correlations because there is uh, a lot of biases as uh, uh, introduced uh, as a professor uh, struck, and uh, uh, also we have some biases in the input and the output uh, uh, input and the predictions. And but for the gradient, uh, gradient or the attention based models, uh, extenders try to capture the first correlations. For example, they focus, they rank the short on man, this edge, or the man on ocean as a two, as a top two explanatory subgraphs. And for the gene explanators, it ranks uh, man has hand, as a man has here, uh, and uh, as a, as a top two edge. Uh, that's uh, uh, so we uh, we uh, conclude that okay the the most of the uh, grading space or the attention based uh, methods they focus on the spurious correlation spurious correlation between the input and the predictions. So what we want is we try to figure out the causal effects or the causal causal things uh, or causal effects of the, the some, uh, each individual each individual edge or the uh, nodes. So here we follow, uh, follow ideas from the causal inference and we do some two interventions. The do some intervention case and do operators. Uh, and this is, idea is very simple. It's uh, we just uh, try, uh, we given an uh, empty set as a extender subgraph and we add some edge into this set. And then we, we fit this set you, we fit this set to the uh, target models and we observe the, how the prediction will change. If the change is large and, the, and the, that means that that somehow means the uh, uh, causal inference or the effects of these nodes are large, is a large. So here is a, we name this part is a, a causal attributions. It's a, based on, on the two inventions. In the but this part, if we do it one by one, is we try uh, we calculate the uh, causal attributes of the each edge or each node one by one, and this problem is a uh, uh, this opt optimization problem is a hard. So uh, can we build another models or the build another paradigm to mimic all the 
uh, mimics this uh, paradigm or the, or the scheme. So here we uh, get some powers from the reverse learning and we build a policy network and try to mimic or the, try, to, uh, mm, try to model this uh, do invention and the selection, do invention and uh, uh, calculate the uh, causal attribution part. So uh, here is, uh, uh, I just give the details and uh, uh, we just uh, focus on the high level things. So here we build the RL agent and it do the causal screening and the, the uh, uh, reward is a causal attribution. Try to select the top K, uh, top, top K uh, most inference uh, edge as a explanatory things. And uh, uh, spreading, we have the, our models is uh, this line is a red line, and we can we can outperform the baselines by a large margin. And uh, we also have some great of uh, the good uh, uh, visualizations uh, over the baselines on the some molecular graphs. Or the, on the, uh, uh, here is uh, some functional groups is uh, highlighted uh, highlighted by our models. But uh, when we for, when we dive deep into our models, especially the RL part, and uh, we first uh, and we find there is a problem. There is a problem called the auto auto distribution things. Uh, for example, we can simulate uh, one simple uh, target, and we can uh, construct a data set uh, with a, a very simple uh, process. Uh, we can we here we have the three types of motifs: house, sample, and uh, pin. And then we combine it with a random tree based uh, a tree base. And uh, then we build a uh, uh, GN models on the on this random uh and random graphs. And the performance is uh, near to the perfect. But uh, when we well, uh, when we only fit these motifs, I think that this this uh, for our uh, human, so, and this part is a perfect uh, explanatory to explain why it is a label as a house. But uh, so if we only fit this part, this motif into the gene models, and it builds, it's, uh, the probability of predicting this part as a house is only the point to uh, point two, and uh, but we randomly randomly add some edges, add uh, add some edges like this one, uh, like the light pink, and we have the uh, uh, more edges, and uh, the probability of the probability of being the uh, multi uh, the house multi will near the one. So we we can have the causal loop at out of distributions, and uh, when we like this part is a G is the full graph, and we try to fit out the GS, and the GS is means our extensory subgraph, and Y is our predictions, and uh, this and uh, this part is the traditional way or traditional explainer do is only only uh only only build the graph neural network on the GS, and uh, but there is a distribution a shift between the G and the GS. So uh, we find this one is a one observed variable O is a confounder of the GS and the Y, and it will black uh, it will open the black door cast GS to D and D to Y, and it will introduce a series correlations between the GS and the Y. So what we can do uh, so it will influence our uh, our uh, decision or the, it will influence our uh, causal attribution on these edges. And uh, so how how can we mimic, uh, how can we uh, magnate it and we can follow some ideas from the causal inference. It's called the front door or the back door adjustment. Here we use the front door adjustment and, uh, like this one and uh, we inject another uh, another variable gs star and uh, between the gs and the y and with this this gs star is only not not the feature re removal it's not uh, and uh, uh, it adds the complementary part uh, add to the gs 
it's called the feature removal and infilling things. And uh, so the process is uh, given a subgraph of interest, and then we remove the complete and make the subgraph of the all uh, all of the data manifold. That means uh, cause the uh, it it causes uh, out of diffusion issues. But we're imaging the uh, possible complement instinct and make the subgraph plus the complement on the data manifold. So we not uh, put the subgraph out of distribution, but in the distributions. And then we quantify the mutual information, mutual information between the infield surrogate, surrogate graph and uh, the target predictions. So uh, we argue that this uh, this mutual information, uh, this this mutual information better better quantifies the total attribution of the subgraph. And uh, we do some experiments, and uh, we calculate the uh, consistency or the agreement between the target between the uh, uh, the explanations in our human explanations. So as we can see, uh, when we fit in, we do this back door or uh, front door adjustment, and we can achieve the better performance than other explanations. But there is a large uh, margin, and uh, there are still a large margin between the explanations and our human explanations. So uh, there are some there are some take home messages about the post hoc explanation. So first the thing is the post hoc explanations may not be feasible to the original GNs because we not open the black door. Uh, oh, sorry, we not open the black box of the graph neural networks. We just uh, observe or try to guess what happens inside this part. So the that that means the uh, post hoc explanations open do not make make any sense. So the uh and it's not provides the enough details to the uh, understand what a black box model is doing. So uh, that is, uh, we just uh, start explaining the black box mach machine learning models for the high stake decisions and, the int and the use the integratable models inside. So uh, it will move from to the intrinsic integratable models. So what is the intrinsic probabilities? And the different from the output of uh, different from the hot hot explainabilities, it try to make the model, try to make the target model transparent. And uh, so the data, uh, so the framework here is the uh, interesting interpretabilities. We given the input graph and we build another, uh, we build another transparent uh, graph, graph neural networks. And its output is the prediction by hat with the rationale subgraph GS. And this uh, subgraph GS is uh, can uh, can provide some uh, spot evidence uh, to the prediction by hat. So we incorporate a rationalization modules into the model designs to make the prediction transparent. And uh, it is an intrinsically reason about the cost and effect observable within our models. And uh, this is our uh, another work. It's a causal, uh, it's, it's a rationale discovery, causal rationale discovery. And when we focus, when we observe the data generation part of the data, of data generation part, and the there is a some, uh, we call the C here, variable is the causal features. And it will determine the uh, uh, label Y of the prediction Y hat. And the, besides the causal features, we also have some environmental features to describe the environments. And we call this the shortcut features, S. And then we combine C and S, the causal part and the environmental part as the, our, obs our observations, G. So this is a blue graph. And this is our target uh, explanatory subgraph. And this is uh, whatever uh, environmental part. In the in general, in the uh, in general, only the pair of the input G and the labels are observed during the training. Well, either the uh, causal feature C and or the shortcut feature S is available. And uh, so it's it, uh, so we we 
how to figure uh, how to uh, address this challenge and uh, we try to divide the uh, GN models into the two parts. The first part is uh, try to find the rationale. And the second part is uh, build a prediction modules on the rationale rather than the full graph. And uh, so we try to find the two functions. The first function is the HC. It's uh, try to find the C, uh, C delta and the, from the G. And the C delta is the uh, uh, estimates the rationale. And the second function is that we build the prediction modules on the C delta and to output the prediction y hat to approach the ground truth y hat. And uh, but some guys will ask, oh, uh, what's the difference? Any differences and any difference from your between your models and uh, the attention modules? So this is a uh, difference. So the previous attention framework is that we only minimize the empirical risk between the attention sub subgraph and uh, and the y prediction uh sorry ground y ground uh, ground truth y and there is the observation we use the observation of the c and the to approach the prediction y but for our uh in uh, rationale discoveries and uh, we we additionally modules uh, the invariant principles between the y and the environmental features. Uh, that means that if we, if we find the rationale, if we find the causal feature well, and the, we, we can guess the, we can guess the perfect uh, prediction y, and uh, uh, regardless of the whatever uh, the environmental is. So we additionally model the environment pretty simple. It achieved the, uh, so, and the, how to achieve this, Constraint, yeah, all the how do we achieve this environmental principles. We can change the upon s to not effect y as long as the c is observed. And here we bought the idea from the interventional distribution things. We can do interventions on the environmental or the, on the shortcut features. And here is s. We can set s as the entity. Okay, we can set the s to the a specific uh, tree base. Uh, for example, this part, this this row, uh, this row shows the original distributions, and uh, as we can see, the multi the house multi is combined with uh, some randomly tree uh, tree base, and then we can do some interventions on the S part. And we can set S as the empty. So we here we 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 will have a, a group of the motifs. And we also can change it to the, a specific tree base. And then combine with the house motif C. And then we can build a new group of the random uh, 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 graphs. So this we call the S interventionals because we do intervention on the S variable. And then this is our object, new objective functions. And uh, uh, we call the DRR uh, principles. And uh, minimize it. It it is to minimize uh, all as conventional risks rather than a uh, a single empirical risk. And uh, uh, it combines two parts. The first part is uh, just a min uh, minimization of the as risk, and the second part is to minimize the variance between uh, across the different uh, groups or the different environments. And uh, so this is our frameworks. When we give a part of original data, and we try to estimate C, uh, the coastal part and the uh, environmental part, and then we use uh, some interventional on the S part, and we will get a uh, uh, augmented of the new groups of the data, and then we build some uh, predictions on the rationale on the coastal features only, and try to approach the branch. And as we can see, uh, we, our models can achieve the better generalization abilities uh, uh, on the different bias, uh, bi bias the data. And uh, here B means the bias. And, uh, uh, and uh, also on the different uh, graph data set, like the unreleased or the graph SST or the, uh, or the OGP data HIV. And uh, and uh, the last work I'd like to share is uh, how can uh, 
uh, so we can transfer our empirical, uh, sorry, environmental learning into the self-supervised learning. It's called the graph green training. So uh, graph contrastive learning is the leading approach uh, in the graph self-supervised learning. And the idea is very simple. simple. It's like if we're given one data, one graph, one graph, and we can do some uh, augmentations and to, uh, to create some uh, views. It's a view one and a view two. And then we do some contract between views and we can maximize the agreements between the views from the same data, from the same graph and minimize the agreement uh, between, the, uh, between the, uh, the view agreements uh, between the different data groups. And, uh, but one question is, uh, if the augmentation are too aggressive, if our augmentations will break some very important things, very important features, and to make uh, our our uh, graphs uh, uh, not that uh, consistent within the uh, same graph. And here we can follow some ideas from our rational discoveries because they have the similar similar modeling part. And uh, this uh, red branch, uh, red branch is. Uh, for the graph contrastive learning, and this group branch is for the rational discovery. And we can see here is the graph augmentations. A is augmentation, and G is a graph, is an input graph, and G is the augmented views. And uh, the contrastive learning here is the uh, F theta is our encoder, graph encoders. We use the graph encoders upon the, uh, upon the augmented uh, views. And we maximize the, uh, the agreements uh, of the A1 and the A2. And it will achieve the environment loop because, uh, because uh, we have the FAG and uh, is equivalent to the FG. And uh, for the rationale of these theories, uh, we use the rationale functions, like uh, rationale function R. And so we have the GR. And uh, then we will have some sufficiency and independence principles. Like so, if we if we can capture the rationale, if we can capture the causal part, and uh, uh, the prediction will determine it. And uh, uh, it also have the invariance loop like this one. It's the F R G is equivalent to the F T. And uh, additionally, we we have the independence constraint like the y is uh, determined y is independent of of the F, uh, the environmental uh, the complemental part uh, if as long as the rationale is observed. So we if we combine this part and we can have our uh, graph pre-training part and. Uh, our model can achieve our model can achieve the SOTA performance, uh, not not that SOTA uh, currently, but the SOTA last year and uh, on the OGB data set, and uh, and also we can we can uh, have some uh, great uh, visualizations on the new tag data set, and we can figure out the rationale of the functional groups. And uh, on the also on the mini the super pixel graphs, and we can capture the and this is the original graph, and uh, this is the ground truth rationale. And uh, as we can see, we can highlight the some part and the digital shift and uh, by our uh, using our models. So the let's get to the summary, and uh, we introduce the two research. Like so the first part is pop hop explanations, and the second one is intrinsic inferabilities. And the first one is not that reliable and not that faithful to the original data or the or the consistent to the human uh human uh community. And uh, and as for the second one is the intrinsic inferabilities. Uh, we try to uh, we try to make our model explain it, uh, it, it explain itself, and uh, uh, we think the causal theory is the one promises to make to push our models uh, or the, to make our models trustworthy or the interpretable, uh, interpretable. and uh, this is the list of our, our work and uh, and. Uh, Welcome to revisit it and uh, I hope for I hope 
our work uh, uh, helpful to your research. And uh, if you have any questions or the interest, and please please drop me a uh, drop me an email and uh, that's all. And uh, second, any questions? Uh, <laughs> Anybody? Oh, I have a question. Okay. So, uh, thanks. Thanks for the great talk. So, in the third work, I have a very technical question. So, uh, in the two intervention uh, operation, you mentioned that we need to combine substructures from uh, maybe several different distributions. Yeah. And uh, as I see from the picture, uh, we need to uh, attach a small substructure in a larger substructure. And the question yeah. is, uh, how do we decide how to combine the two subgraphs and uh, does the technique of combining influence the uh, outcome of the theory? Oh, yeah, great question. And uh, 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 actually, we didn't do it in the graph row space. And we did, and uh, we do it in the representation levels. And uh, I think this part, this formulation here is the uh, way. We can't we so first given the full graph G and we divide it into the two parts C and the S. And uh, currently it, it is uh, in the row graph form, and thus we fit it into the shared graph encoders, and we will have their representations. And we only change the representation of the environmental features or the causal uh, shortcut part. And then we, we combine their representations, not the subgraphs. And uh, I think this is uh, not that cool, but uh, it uh, somehow worked. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, maybe I have uh, another question. Yeah. So this question is not limited to the genes. So uh, because we are at the state of pre-trained large language models and the very models, yeah. and we already have some very cool very analogic models. Maybe in the future we'll have some pre-trained, uh, very large pre-trained large models as well. So, uh, do you have any effects on how to use these pre trained lab models to uh, improve the explainability or the interpretability of uh, deep learning models? Oh, okay, great question. And uh, you mean the large language model or okay. the large graph model? Uh, not limited to large language or graph models, uh, any, any, any kind of model. Really. Okay, so I think the this part, this this work can be an uh, initial try, and uh, if we uh, incorporate some causal causal theories into the pre-training part, or the, and we can mix the pre-training models, and not only do the ramification part, is uh, to do the uh, figure out what part what part of the groups uh, graphs are important. Yeah, I think this is, should be one way, and uh, another way is uh, if we already have some large models and uh, uh, I think so, uh, we can try some prompt learning called the prompt things and uh, try to uh, let it figure out some chain of source and uh, let it explain <laughs> it to itself yeah kind of things chain of source yeah okay okay thank you okay. so okay thank you so much for the wonderful talk so